I want to make this a better state. And if we want a better state, we need a better governor. And tonight, I ask you to continue that discussion with me. A projected winner in the Republican race for governor, Tudor Dixon will face off against Governor Whitmer in November. We are live from her campaign tonight. Too close to call. Congressman Peter Meyer trailing John Gibbs with hundreds of thousands of votes still to count. We'll break down the latest in that heated race. Your primary night coverage begins now. From your local election headquarters, this is Michigan Primary Night on Wood TV. And good evening. Thanks for joining us tonight as we break down the results of the Michigan primary. I'm Brian Sterling. And I'm Susan Shaw. A major call early in the night, Tudor Dixon, the projected winner in the Republican primary for governor. But it is a different story tonight in the 3rd Congressional District. In con incumbent Congressman Peter Meyer and John Gibbs are neck and neck. We do have team coverage for you tonight with reporters all across the state covering the candidates in both of, the, both of those key races. But we want to start right here in studio with political reporter Rick Alvin. And Rick is breaking down the numbers for us tonight. It is a, a pretty early. It was a pretty early call on that race for governor. Yeah, I would have never expected this race, not this race, this race that has been so unsettled since the beginning, this race that's had so many twists and turns, that's had so many candidates that people had never really met. Yet at 9.30 or somewhere about there, we were getting information that the race was being called. Well, here's one of the reasons. If you pull out a little bit, let's look at some of the counties. First of all, you see the statewide numbers, 37% in, Tudor Dixon at 40%, well ahead of everybody else. But if you start looking at the counties, you can go anywhere. Ottawa County, she's leading. Kent County, she's leading. Pick a county, any county, Oakland County. 47%, and that's a big vote change there. So I, all the counties that are responding that I have looked at so far, Tudor Dixon is leading across the board, and I think that led to some of those early calls. And I'll tell you, there's still a lot of votes to be counted. 60% and 40%, and there may be some, uh, there are a lot of absentees in there. We'll continue to watch this, but that trend has continued since the very first votes came in. So that's where we are tonight. This race has been called. It won't be official until the ballots are certified. They'll have to be done locally, and then they'll go to the state. So there are still some steps to go through. But right now, Tudor Dixon wins this race. We'll meet Gretchen Whitmer in the fall. Sue, Brian. Okay, Rick, thank you. Now, we want to get to our reporters out at campaign watch parties tonight. We want to begin with News 8's Whitney Burney, who is live in Grand Rapids at campaign headquarters for Tudor Dixon, the projected winner tonight. Whitney. Brian and Sue, Tudor Dixon just left the stage within the last 20 minutes after giving a victory speech. That speak or speech started out with lots of thank yous, firstly to God and then to voters for what she said was the right choice. She then went on to thank her children, who she says have made multiple sacrifices during her campaign to get this nomination. She went on to say that if she does win in November, the next four years will be filled with opportunities for kids like hers. Not school lockdowns and massive grocery bills. She says this race isn't about candidates. It's about the people in Michigan who she says have suffered during the pandemic. She went on to talk about community safety. She talked a lot about inflation and unemployment, but she really spent the most time in that speech talking about those school lockdowns. At one point, she even called Governor Whitmer the queen of lockdowns. She says because the governor denied children the right or the access to education, she set up an entire generation for failure. She says that Michigan deserves better. We have all suffered because Gretchen Whitmer's policy stopped us from doing what the people of Michigan do best, from providing for our families, strengthening our communities, working hard and every day working to make Michigan the best place in the world to live. Mine is a vision of a family friendly Michigan with good careers better schools, safe communities, and roads you can actually drive on.
Now, Tudor also spoke a lot about businesses that had to shut down after COVID came through the state of Michigan and how Governor Whitmer's policies uh, were a part of that. During her speech, there was a lot of applause throughout. There was a lot of cheer from the crowd. So clearly the energy is there. The support is there, at least from the folks here in this room. Now it'll be on the Republican Party to unite behind Tudor at the polls this November. Brian Sue. All right, yeah, Whitney, we watched it live. It was an impressive speech. It was. Yep, Whitney, thank you for the live coverage. Our coverage continues now with News 8's David Horak. And he's live in Kalamazoo at a watch party for Garrett Saldano, who conceded about 90 minutes ago now. David? Sue and Brian, three takeaways from tonight. First off, when just around when the Associated Press also made the call for Tudor Dixon to become the presumptive Republican nominee for governor, Garrett Saldano took the podium and told his supporters in his concession speech to stay engaged, stay activated, and stay inspired. Number two, he added that he will continue, just like he's done through his grassroots movement, as he called it, he will continue to be active on social media and calling on his supporters to support in turn, Tudor Dixon. I'm here to tell you, we all have the same goal, and that is to be Governor Whitmer. Yes. Right? Yes. We have to support her. We have to get behind her, and hopefully, she can do what she needs to do to be Governor Whitmer. Third and final takeaway is what's next for Saldano, and he says he will return to his family business and, quote, take a break from politics. And after ending his speech to an uproar of applause, he left the podium and said, I still think the results are a pile of hot garbage. Live in Kalamazoo, David Horak, News 8. Yeah, we watched that concession speech, and he again thanked his supporters and talked about his accomplishments, but then putting his support behind Tudor Dixon. Yep moving forward. David, thank you. News 8's Megan Bunchman continues our coverage from the east side of the state. Megan's been in Birmingham all night long where Kevin Rinke held his watch party this evening. Megan. Good evening, Sue and Brian. The party is still ongoing at Kevin Rinke's watch party right now. Moods are high. The music is continuing to blare. Despite the gubernatorial candidate conceding on Twitter about 30 minutes ago, just before 10.30. Now in his tweets, he thanked his family and friends for their ongoing support, adding, quote, while tonight's results are not what we had hoped for, the people of Michigan have decided on another candidate. I caught up with a businessman and political outsider directly after he thanked his supporters earlier in the night. This is what he had to say about what's next for his political party. We need to look forward as a party. We need to stop the infighting as a party. And for the Republicans to take back and change the course that I believe America is going on, we need to have and do a better job of coming up with qualified candidates versus shiny pennies. He'll be at tomorrow's Unity event with the GOP in Lansing. In fact, after Ricky conceded on Twitter, his media team told me that they will be releasing no further information. I'm Megan Bunchman, live in Birmingham, New Saints. Yeah, he toyed with a, a concession speech earlier in the night, tried to walk it back a little bit, and then I guess he finally went on Twitter. Yeah. Megan, thank you.